there, my name is Rebecca Hennis from Paul Moves. I'm going to show you a couple things that are going to make it easier for you to do a controlled lift, whether it is in a elbow stand, a handstand, or an iguana mount, or even any type of deadlift. It really has to do, definitely you have to have a nice, strong, stable upper body. And you go through a progression to make sure you can do all the moves before you try these. Um, at least the deadlifts. Now, for the elbow stand, it does have to do with the inner thigh flexibility. And it has to do with being able to control what the pelvis is doing. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like on a pole, and hopefully you'll be able to recognize what it is I'm doing. So if I'm in an elbow stand, if I'm going up into an elbow stand, I'm going to take my legs out. And see, notice I have my back against the pole. Now, at first you might want to put your head slightly down on the ground. You can, just do not put any weight on it. But I'm going to lean back. Here I'm lifting my head off by pushing my elbows into the ground. Now watch my legs. They have to go out, so that's inner thigh flexibility. Now watch my back. It's going to go flat up the pole. And then we can do all sorts of flexible things. <laughs> and then we're going to go back to a straddle. My pelvis is more of an arched back. I'm going to flatten it or lift it up. Now it's flat. And then with using my inner thighs, the flexibility of my inner thighs, I'm going to curl it down. So pelvis control and flexible inner thighs. Now when we do this as a handstand or an iguana mount, it is similar. If I do not have flexible inner thighs, then when I try to lift my legs up, my legs are going to be out here away from the pole as opposed to closer to the pole and more in line with coming up. So they're heavier if they're coming out here. At least the perception is that they're heavier. They never changed weight, but they're going to feel significantly heavier because they're further away from where your, your um, kind of locus of control is. Okay? So handstands. Now when you do a handstand, you won't always have to do this way. There's a lot of people out there who are really amazing. But at first, you might want to lean back against the pole. Notice my wrists are more than a uh, 45 degree angle. Excuse me, they're a 90 degree angle. They're smaller, which means that I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on my wrists. You're not going to want to do this if your wrists are susceptible to injury. Now from there, I'm going to lift. There's inner thigh flexibility. Watch my back. It lifts up. And when I come down, I'm going to tuck, 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 tuck my pelvis and come down. Okay? Same thing with the guana mount, with what the hips are doing. Now, with a deadlift, it's probably going to be a little bit more challenging to see what's happening because my body, if I'm in any type of full bracket hand position, and I'm going to take my leg out behind me, I am more arched. Now, if I am flexible enough to where my legs can go straight out from my hips, they will be easier to lift than if they go that way. That's going to be very, very difficult. So if I get my inner thighs more flexible when I lift up, there's less weight to lift, okay? So from there, and hopefully you can see the pelvis without me kicking the wall. So I'm going to take my leg back and lift up, okay? You'll see most people start here, right? Especially if they're hanging. So we're back. And we go up, a little bit of a bend of the leg there, right? Um, I do tend to put a little swing, because I like to. 
So in order to get our inner thighs more flexible, what we have to do is stretch the inner thigh, toe forward, knee forward, and straight down. Not on your, if you bend your knees, you're going to miss it. So it's going to be right here with a straight leg. We could be on our elbows if you want. If you're flexible enough, you can have both legs straight out from your hips. Toes forward, knees forward, okay? Now when I get into doing a pelvic tilt, and you'll see this, if you, if you see some of your classes and you have them stretch a straddle and they're doing this, see my pelvis, it's kind of sinking back, it usually has to do more with these inner thighs. So you can also have them sit their butt against the wall legs up and bring the legs down and I'm going to take my pubic bone and I'm going to kind of turn it towards the wall so you can hang out here for a while so that is also a way to stretch pelvic control looks like this so if I am in more of an arched position and I have my toes on the ground I know this isn't a neutral back it's arched so hands are up, so I'm not using my hands. I'm going to tuck the pelvis, tuck the pelvis, tuck the pelvis, tuck the pelvis, and bring my knees to my armpits. And then I'm going to go back, arch, up, arch, up. So that's a little bit more of the control that you would be doing. Now it is not this. I don't really care about that. That's not going to help us do anything. It might, but not this. So we tap, we come up. Now, one of the things we can do that's really fun is we are bringing our knees to our armpits, and then we're going to take our upper body, we bring our upper body through, then we take our upper body down, my hips are still off the ground, and then I take that tilt to an arch. Tilt, arms through, Arms back, arch, okay? Um, you will feel that in your back and your 